mean, you've already received copies of the newsletter, and we have several more, so feel free to take them with you. We're going to make sure that at community meetings and at other places we have them available. So we want everyone, especially your neighbors, to know the work that we've done. And I say we, not just me, but us together. A lot of work that's been done over the past few months in District 3. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I see uh, Mr. C.W. Whitaker, who is our Dallas uh, County School Board Trustee, is here and he's on the job. So let's In District 3. You. District 3. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at the end, I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Uh, my vision since day one has been to make District 3 the most attractive place in Dallas for residents to live, work, play, and pray. Uh, Many of you know District 3 is made up of middle and upper income uh, residents with 75 to 80% single family homes. It was a predominantly made up of residents of color. And that goes against the perception of Southern Dallas. When people think about Southern Dallas, they think about more poverty, low income, but I'm honored to represent a district that does not feed into that stereotype that is made up of single family, a majority of single family homes and individuals who have chose to live in that area who are middle and upper income. My top priority is coming in office was to establish a maximum response time of 24 hours for my office and to focus my efforts on getting a grocery store in the Redbird Square at 67 Shopping Center, most affectionately known as the Shopping Center where Sackett say it used to be. Right. Uh, to give you an update on that, um, that Shopping Center has been sold. Uh, Payman Ibiteri is the new owner. I've met with him on a couple of occasions. Matter of fact, met with him a couple of weeks ago in our most recent meeting. He's ready to come and present to the community his plan for redeveloping the mall, but he wanted to make sure that he had uh, got a contract with at least two tenants so he could come and he could, produce, he could present that information at that time. Also, Priority has been to attract and maintain the middle class in Southern Dallas. There are a lot of efforts to redevelop the Redbird area. Some of you may be aware, even though it's not in my districts across the street, Southwest Center Mall, Mr. Peter Brodsky, uh, who I believe has the vision and the commitment to Southern Dallas and to that community to really see that community be reflective of what we would be proud of. He's had a number of community meetings. I hosted one with him and, and Payman there where uh, his vision in detail, uh, as far as he could present it, his vision, he produced and showed his vision, showed some of his preliminary plans, and those hundred or so people that were at that meeting were very, very excited about what he had to offer. Um, our accomplishments, accomplishments and activities. We have continued to maintain one of the lowest crime rates in the city of Dallas. When people think about District 3, and we look at the numbers and stats, and you'll see in the newsletter, we made sure that we have those crime stats available. We have one of the lowest crime rates in the city of Dallas. We followed up and reported 311 calls of service requests by constituents in District 3. If you've attended any of our community meetings, and we've had about, we had about 17 community meetings. Uh, if you attend any of our community meetings, then you know if you came and you had a question or if it was an issue that you had, uh, Chris was in the back, and I'm, uh, I tell you, Chris was out sick yesterday, and I just didn't think I knew what I was going to do. So Chris has been excellent. He's my assistant. Let's give Chris a round of applause. And Yolanda, my secretary, they, they work hand in hand. They're bad men in life. And they are the, the best, I'm a little biased, but they are the best <laughs> staff members we have here in the city of Dallas. And so I'm honored to have them on the team. And so uh, anytime anyone comes and, and has an issue or concern, they immediately make sure that either they will turn in the service request or they'll have you fill out one of those yellow forms. And then the next day, I've seen Chris do this, put in if it's five, 10, however many service requests personally, to make sure those get addressed. One of the things that um, I've focused on and hope to do is to empower residents on how to take uh, responsibility and control for their own neighborhoods. And so it's important that people know not only when you make a service request, 
then it's important that you follow that tracking number because with that tracking number, then you can follow the status of their service request. And that way you can hold staff accountable. We began the development of a marketing plan to attract and retain the middle class of Southern Dallas, which I'm extremely excited about. If you have not done it yet, when you get a chance, go to www.dallasgrowthsouth.com. Check out that website. That website is, we're hoping for it to be a one stop, one point stop for anything positive related to Southern Dallas. There's some great information and great stories that's on there. Many things many people didn't even know that are going on in Southern Dallas, those things are listed on that website. We also hosted our first annual District 3 Family Day at Bahama Beach Water Park. Uh, I don't know how many of you had a chance to come out. Several of my council colleagues came out. The mayor came out. 97.9 came out. Other radio stations. And it was just a great family day to highlight uh, the great asset that we have, which is Bahama Beach. It is the only, it is, it's a city-owned water park. Many people didn't know that. It is owned by the city. Uh, it's a great place for families to come out and to uh, enjoy what we have to offer in Oak Cliff. Uh, we hosted a press conference right here in this room for the Oak Cliff Super Bowl, uh, called in Kimball High School football game. We had both bands here. Uh, we had the coaches. We had alumni. And many, many people know about how important Carter and Kimball are, those schools are to Oak Cliff. And we want to make sure that those schools are continuing to perform well. We want to make sure that it's a we're using those as assets to attract people to live in this part of Oak Cliff. So we hosted um, the press conference. Then we had an alumni reception for both schools at Delta Charles. Those of you who know me, you know Delta Charles is somewhere that I like to have a lot of events and, and meetings. And I think it's one of the best kept secrets in the city of Dallas. It's the uh, restaurant at Dallas Executive Airport. And so uh, it's very nice. Uh, it's somewhere that we like to highlight the good that's going on in Oak Cliff. So we had a reception for the alumni that came out. We had a good meeting, good conversation. And the whole point was to let them know that we want them to once again to reconnect and be engaged in those high schools that they graduated from. We need their involvement in that area of the neighborhood. We also hosted the first annual Carter Kimball Classic basketball game lunch for players and alumni for both schools. Um, that was an indeed honor. We had it at the Dallas Executive Airport. Those young men had never been to Dallas Executive Airport before. I don't think they even knew there was an airport that was right there in their neighborhood. So oftentimes exposure is, makes all the difference in the world. Those two coaches, not only did they, um, are they competitors, but yet still they're friends. They were able to express to both teams the importance of, of, of being a part of the legacy of Kimball High School, being a part of the legacy of Carter High School, and why um, it's important that not only they go out and compete, but then it's important for them to be an active part of the neighborhood, for them to volunteer, for them to take part, things in the neighborhood. Um, our recorder here, C.W. Whitaker, he offered a great suggestion. He said, when the guys go to get lunch, and trust me, we had to order extra food <laughs> for those young men. He said, when they go to get lunch, when they come back, why don't we have the Carter players and the Kimball players sit together? And I was like, C.W., I don't know how we're going to make that happen. Matter of fact, I delegated it to C.W. in order to make it happen. And he did. When I came back in, those young men were sitting by each other initially. They weren't saying much, but after a few minutes went by, they were talking to each other, and they were really interacting with each other, and I think that was a great thing. They got up, and all the seniors from both schools, we took pictures with the seniors, uh, and it was a great, great thing, and it's something that we plan to do annually. We led the effort to get Neighborhood Plus adopted as the official plan for revitalizing neighborhoods for the city of Dallas. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Neighborhood Plus, Neighborhood Plus is the city's plan for revitalizing neighborhoods. Um, the whole point behind Neighborhood Plus is to understand that we can't just plant neighborhoods. We have to make sure there are services that are around neighborhoods that are going to make those neighborhoods attractive. And so we've got to make sure that we have, uh, for, for families with young kids, 
health services. We got to make sure that we have nice restaurants. We got to make sure that we have all of these things around the neighborhood. And so that was um, the thought process behind Neighborhood Plus. And now this official has been adopted. Um, Alan Sims is probably running around here somewhere. He's the chief of Neighborhood Plus. I don't know how many of you, some of you may have had a chance. We had a meeting uh, last Tuesday, the day after Dr. Martin Luther King holiday, where we had Mr. Alan Sims, who did a presentation of Neighborhood Plus. And so um, we wanted to make sure that as they roll out this implementation plan, that um, our residents of District 3, and then also the, those who are a part of a larger community of Dallas, understand what Neighborhood Plus is, understand how it affects uh, our neighborhood and our city. Uh, we reestablished the District 3 Neighborhood Leaders Council. We had our first leadership training session. How many presidents of neighborhood associations or crime watches do we have here? All right, let's give them a hand. You know, in this day and time, it's not easy to represent your neighborhood. You know, whenever, whenever there's a, a, a issue or bulk trash is on the street, your door is the first one that gets knocked on. So it's a, it's a thankless job, you know, and so we want to encourage them and, and support them. But what we did is we, we started a Neighborhood Leaders Council. And if you're president of a neighborhood association or if you're chair of a crime watch group, what we did is we had our first meeting at Dallas Executive Airport. Um, and what we wanted to do, the thought process behind it was, District 3 is a very broad district. It stretches, stretches all across the city of Dallas. And some of the issues and concerns that one may have in one neighborhood may be a little bit different than other neighborhoods. And the way that we, the way that we appreciate each other and we, we have a unified District 3 is we have to spend time to get to know one another and know what each other's interest is. And so we had the Le uh, Neighborhood Leaders Council meeting. It was an excellent meeting. Uh, Sandra Aldridge had, had offered to, who is the uh, secretary of Singing Hills Neighborhood Association, who keeps me busy, I tell you. <laughs> keeps me busy. And I, I commend her for that. You know, we often talk about nose and neighbors, right? <laughs> We talk about those and neighbors, but we need those people. We need those those and neighbors because they keep us informed and they have a love for our neighborhood. So I commend you for your diligence and staying on my last nerve. <laughs> I really appreciate that. But Sandra volunteered at the end of the meeting to coordinate our next meeting, to get the names of all those who are neighborhood leaders. And if your neighborhood is represented and we don't have your neighborhood association president's information, let Sandra know. I'm gonna brag about something for a minute. Um, on this Saturday at one o'clock, we're having our next neighborhood leaders district, 1.30, thank you, see, she keep me straight. <laughs> at 1.30, we're having our next district three neighborhood leaders council meeting and I have a surprise for them. There is an awesome group called BC Workshop. Some of you may have seen the documentary that was on on Bonton. It was a great documentary, and um, Brent Brown, who does just a great job with that. Um, I met with him last week, and we had a conversation, and what we talked about is they have a map, and it's called Know Your Neighborhood. You can uh, Google people organizing places, and this is a map of the city of Dallas. And on that matter of fact, there's a link on the DallasGrowSouth.com website. And what you can do is you can zero in by city council district on your neighborhood, click on your neighborhood, and it has the statistics about your neighborhood. But what we want to do is we're going to take it to the next level. Uh, I met with Brett Brown, and I met with um, a gentleman named Dwayne, who's with Dallas Regional Chamber. What we talked specifically about is how do we make sure that these neighborhoods that are overlooked, neighborhoods that otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't be cons would part of this map, make sure they're included? So this Saturday, and you're getting some inside information, okay? <laughs> this Saturday, Brent and the BC Workshop is coming to our meeting. Matter of fact, they're gonna carry the agenda. And what we're gonna do this Saturday, every neighborhood leader who's present will have an opportunity to map their neighborhood. If we're going to grow, if we're going to attract and retain the middle class, one of the greatest things about Oak Cliff, and my district is about 90-95% Oak Cliff, is the neighborhoods. 
and the people that live in the neighborhood. Those, that's the greatest asset. And so what we want to do is we want to give our neighborhood leaders an opportunity to, on this particular map, to highlight the neighborhood. Not only do you have an opportunity to draw your neighborhood, you have an opportunity to do a video interview where you can brag about your own neighborhood. And so I'm excited about it, look, uh, about it looking forward to it. And so we'll start right at 1.30. So if you're here, your neighborhood association president, uh, president is not here, make sure you let them know uh, to come out Saturday at 1.30 to Dallas Executive Airport. No, no, no. It's at uh, Illinois Hampton Law. No, that's right. We moved it. Thank you. <laughs> the Illinois Hampton, Hampton Illinois Law. That's right. Keep him straight. Got, Keep him straight. Uh, uh, Delta Shaw and Dallas Executive on the brain. All right. So, um, we also hosted a District 3 Neighborhood Leaders and Ministers Breakfast. Uh, Paul Quinn College has just been so supportive of me and what we're looking to do. And so, we hosted a breakfast there where we invited neighborhood leaders, community leaders, uh, to talk about uh, the vision for District 3 and the role that the ministers can play and community leaders can play. We all have a role to play in it, and so we want to give everyone an opportunity to take ownership in that. Um, this is something I'm excited, I'm glad he just walked in. We established the Rebirth of Red Bird Steering Committee. Now, uh, one of the greatest assets of District 3 is the Wynwood Hills, um, um, Twin Oaks neighborhood, Oak Terrace, that whole area is one of the greatest assets. It has been historically where our more affluent African American called home. And so what we want to do is we want to revitalize that area. We want to redevelop that area. We want to make sure as that area grows that it stays uh, the asset that it is. The golf course down there has been a great asset for that area. And so uh, my good friend, uh, Rem Gerald Britt, who walked in, you stand up for a minute, Reverend Britt. Has volunteered, a vol he was either volunteer or volunteer, I couldn't remember one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the service chair of the steering committee. And so me and him are gonna be meeting next week and putting our committees uh, together. And so uh, at our meeting we had um, on well, January the 20th, we talked about February the 2nd. And February 7th, 2nd is the night where we're gonna have our Rebirth the Red Bird community meeting where we're gonna have city staff who's been dedicated to that area, and we're inviting anybody and everybody that lives in that area. We have a large room down at Thurgood Marshall. We're gonna start at 7 p.m. I'm gonna have to leave a city council retreat in order to be there, but I think uh, that's gonna be a, a, a historic night for what we're looking to do in that neighborhood. I told them when we met, our purpose isn't just to come together and talk about need to repair streets and need to make sure trash is picked up. We want to put together a 25 to 50 year plan for what that neighborhood, what the neighbors who live there now want that neighborhood to look like. So we're excited about that as well. We partnered with Fido Cliff, I'm surprised Andrew Sanders isn't here. Um, and we had the first annual Dallas Veg Fest Health Festival. Did you get a chance to attend the Veg Fest? It was a great, great event. It was the first time that there's been a health festival in Southern Dallas focused on healthy living. As a result of their, that, there are efforts being led by Feed Oak Cliff to establish an Oak Cliff Farmers Market for individuals who live in the Oak Cliff area. Uh, we know about the food deserts, and I posted an article this morning on my Facebook page about this group that's coming uh, into, into Southern Dallas to help uh, address this issue. So I think there's momentum that's building. I think people are starting to hear us. The fact that even though we live in Southern Dallas, we want to live, we want to eat healthy, we want to live a healthy lifestyle as well. And so instead of having to continue to go to Cedar Hill and North Dallas, we want healthy food choices for our area. Um, some of you may have been made aware of the fact that many of the men yards that are in Southern Dallas are gonna be converted to cost savers, okay? Um, I know. However, I had opportunity, me and uh, Councilwoman, Councilmember Carolyn Arnold had opportunity to meet with the uh, regional director and we talked about that specifically and what we're looking to do is see how we can um, not only uh, 
address this issue because at this point, the decision has been made, but what we want to do is make sure they know going forward that we, we in Southern Dallas deserve a grocery store that's going to have fresh food, fresh foods, going to have healthy food choices just like anybody else. We have the money to spend. We'll spend the money in, in, in our neighborhood just like we spend it outside of our neighborhood. And so um, real soon, there's going to be a meeting. All four of the African American Council members have sat down and we talked about this. And uh, just stay tuned because we're not going to stand for allowing this to happen anymore in the city of Dallas. We're not going to allow that to happen anymore. I don't see anyone with Bretton Woods Neighborhood uh, Association, but and it's a new neighborhood association. Uh, I got a phone call, and it's Barbara McLeod. She lives in the Bretton Woods neighborhood. And what Barbara did was said, you know what? I heard about Councilwoman uh, Carol, Carol Arnold having a cold crawl. I don't know how many of you heard about that. She called it a cold crawl. Actually, what a crawl called cold crawl is, is where you have code enforcement, animal services, police, who actually go and walk a neighborhood. Now, she didn't want to call it the Bretton Woods cold crawl. But she said, if they can do it in District 4, we want to do it for our neighborhood. And so what happened is, on a cold Saturday morning, we met about 9 in the morning, and she called it a Bretton Woods beautification walk. We met. It was a three-mile walk. We walked three miles from the neighborhood. I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but we walked three miles through the neighborhood, and we had a police escort. They drove right behind us real slow. We had code who stopped at each door, and they hung uh, information about, you know, how to maintain your, your neighborhood and your houses and things of that nature. And it was a very, very uh, effective thing. Bretton Woods is only, they only had their neighborhood association one year. And for them to be such a new young neighborhood and have such a new young neighborhood association, for them to say, you know what? We want to take responsibility for our neighborhood. We want to invite you as our council member to come and walk with us and go to our door to door and let our neighbors know that we want to maintain a nice, a clean, a healthy neighborhood. And so that was that was a great opportunity. Matter of fact, it was the same day we had our first neighborhood leaders meeting. Many of you are aware of the uh, concerns that were brought up at Dallas Executive Airport as far as uh, the planes and, and, and one particular plane. If you live in the area, if you live near Dallas Executive Airport, raise your hand just so I have an idea. Okay. All right. Well, what happened was uh, as the city of Dallas was beginning to develop the, the master plan for Dallas Executive Airport, there was a committee, and that's called the steering committee. But this committee is made up of residents, stakeholders. I know uh, 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 Ms. Gullah, who's the, Mrs. Gullah, who's the uh, president of Cliff Chamber of Commerce, is a stakeholder on that committee. And what they did was they wanted to make sure that the concerns and the interests of the neighborhood were taken into consideration as we developed the master plan. And in the past, they may have felt like they hadn't been listened to. So what happened is I attended many of the meetings. I made sure that their concerns were made known to city staff. And as it was voted and approved, the, uh, as we voted and approved the master plan, one of the conditions for approving the master plan was that a neighborhood study would be done on land use. And so that was something that, um, that the committee wanted. That was something that I talked with staff about. That's something that was included. So now, um, the University of Texas at Arlington has a master's program who specializes in this. And so they're going to be the group that's going to be working hand in hand with the neighborhood on this study that's going to be done. So I just want you to know who live near the neighborhood, live near the airport, that those concerns were, were heard and they were addressed. The steering committee met, um, I believe, last week. No, they met the same night we had the Neighborhood Plus community meeting. But one of the things we agreed to is the steering committee doesn't need to be the ones who only ones who know what's going on. So the steering committee meets once a month, but we have a larger community meeting once a quarter. That way, anybody who wants to know what's going on with the airport and what the plans are going forward can attend. And so we'll make sure that we send it out 
on our email list. And if there's anyone who's not on the email list, make sure you see Chris and Yolanda. We want to make sure that you get all the information. Uh, this is something I was really excited about. We hosted a business mixer. Uh, you can probably guess where it was. <laughs> <laughs> At Dallas City Airport. And uh, for local businesses and chambers of commerce in Dallas. And um, that was something that, that was unusual as I talked with different people. And it may be the last one we do because people kind of felt like we were stepping on, on, on other people's territory. But we wanted to partner and we wanted to show that um, it's important that we support our local businesses. It's important, important that those who support our local businesses have an opportunity to interact with one another, network with one another. Um, and so we had um, the Black Regional Contract Association who was there, the Oak Cliff Chamber of Commerce presented, as well as the Dallas Black Chamber. We invited the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and others. We didn't, you know, we invited everyone to come and they were there. And so it was a great event. People asked me when we have another one. I said, I don't know if we are. I think we're gonna get out of the network of business and we're gonna support chambers who do that very well. But that was a great, great event. Um, something that I was really honored to have an opportunity to do. Um, many of you may know of Brandon Carr with the Dallas Cowboys, but I've gotten a chance to know Brandon Carr with the Dallas Cowboys. And Brandon has a, a, a heart and a commitment to, uh, to our community. He started a foundation, Carr Carriers Foundation, and uh, we partnered with the Oak Cliff Chamber of Commerce, Brandon Carr, and the Carr Foundation to offer support and supplies to students who serve Zumwalt Middle School. Um, we hosted something that I think was long overdue. Um, we hosted a back to school event in January. People don't think about the fact that kids run out of school supplies by the end of the semester. And they're left on their own to, you know, parents are left on their own in, in, in these areas, in, um, in, in some areas with this other dollars, there's a great need. And so oftentimes we don't think about that. So we were able to get the support uh, in order to, to do this event. I serve as the uh, council liaison to the Gross South Advisory Council. And uh, Taylor Torrance, who is the urban specialist, and I'm uh, proud to say my, one of my mentees uh, at Sarah Zumwalt, and he, did, he, he had his uh, gross out presentation, and at the end of the presentation, anybody who was there received school supplies. And so we were glad to partner on that. As a matter of fact, tonight um, at Sarah Zumwalt, which is in District 3, um, we're having a, an event. Brandon Carr paid for ties for all the boys and girls. They're moving, they're in a school, they're moving toward uniforms. And so he paid for the ties for uh, all of the students uh, at Sarah Zuma because there was just a need. And so tonight, if you can be there, especially uh, males present tonight at 445, or well, this afternoon at 445 at Sarah Zuma, they're going to do a tie presentation and we're going to show those young men how to tie ties. So um, I think that's awesome. And so uh, I, I thank Brandon and, and Troy, who's the uh, executive director for uh, Car Foundation, Car Carers Foundation, for that. Uh, we also had an opportunity to attend and present Grow South presentations all over Southern Dallas. But um, I was asked to present for Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson, her staff. Uh, in Dallas and in D.C. Every year, her D.C. staff comes to town and they take them all around, but they wanted to make sure that they understood what Grow South was and what it was all about and what was, and how much of a priority that is for the city of Dallas. And I see Representative Ed in Denise Johnson's office. Mr. Blair in the back, I appreciate you being here. Who's a resident of what? <laughs> District 3. District 3. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, some a little biased. But, um, and so we had an opportunity to present to him and the staff there about Grow South and, uh, and what exactly Grow South means and how um, it will benefit uh, the city of Dallas. Uh, so let's talk about 2016. That was all in 2015. So many people, and, and, I, and I'll say this, y'all, I do get risk. <laughs> I see you all the time, and you inbox me on Facebook, Casey, you're getting red, so you, you know, you always, <laughs> but when you have a passion, you have a commitment, you have a vision, you just have to run with it, so. But I do get rest. Um, these are plans for 2016. 
As soon as the weather clears up, how many of you live down, uh, uh, live near the area where Red Bird Lane is? How many of you have seen the, the decorative lights that are down there, even driven by? That is awesome. I can't take credit for it. My predecessor, Judge Von Seal Jones Hill, is the one who put the money in there and made sure that that, that that was available. And so I talked to her just the other day. I said, I always give you credit. Even though people say, you, I'm the council member now, and they see it, no. She's the one who put things in place. Now, I see Andrea Sanders back there. didn't speak to me this morning. How you doing, Andrea? Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks to Andrea. Um, we got those lights in. She said sometime in mid-December, late December, they will be up, and, and they met the deadline. And you can best believe she got probably about 50 text messages. But yet and still, they're up. They look nice. As a matter of fact, uh, we were at the community meeting the other night, and we had a lot of residents who live right in that area. And I said, you know, how do y'all like the lights? I said, we love them, we love them, but now we can see the potholes on the street. I said, you just can't win, can you? <laughs> But uh, they're enjoying it, and as soon as the weather clears up, we're planning a block party down there. Uh, Chris has already already uh, contacted everybody that we need to block the streets off and, and everything, and so uh, we're going to call it a Light Up Redbird block party. So I'm excited about that. Probably in March, you know, Texas, we go into late February, it's still cold, but by March we should be fine. So uh, we're going uh, gonna to celebrate that, have a DJ down there, and, and have food, and just have a good time. And, and enjoy um, the lighting that's down there. We're going to roll out the marketing plan for attracting and retaining the middle class this year. We've been working on this for several months. Uh, we have some of the most innovative young professionals when it comes to marketing that are working on this. And you're going to be extremely pleased with this. If we're going to attract and retain the middle class, we've got to have a tool that's going to be attractive to them. And that's what this marketing plan is all about. It's innovative. Uh, our target is millennials and Generation X. That's who we're going after. And uh, this plan is going to be very, very effective in doing that. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, real soon, this is something I'm excited about. As a formerly, as a recently resigned teacher, um, we're going to have a conversation with your council member with all of the students all the high school, a group, a select group of high school students in all three of the high schools that's in District 3. I think that's really, really important because they are the future of the city of Dallas. Uh, we're going to host quarterly community meetings at local businesses in District 3. Uh, we're just going to go from one to the next and we're going to have conversations about, uh, about the business, how we can support businesses and how uh, businesses can be supportive of us. Um, we will continue to maintain one of the lowest crime rates in the city of Dallas. Um, I want to commend uh, Chief Brown and his staff for making sure that whenever we have issues or concerns, they are immediately on it. Chief told me a few months ago, hey, you got my cell number. If you need anything, pick up the phone and give me a call. And he's been right on top of it ever since. We're going to kick off our District 3 leaders, leadership development training sessions. Uh, at our first meeting, we had uh, Dr. Jesse McNeil, who's going to offer serve, he's going to offer leadership training to all of our leaders. You know, one of the main things that a lot of leaders talk about, we just can't get people involved. Uh, how many of you are part of Nextdoor.com? Nextdoor is a excellent tool. I call it Online Neighborhood Association meeting. That's what it is. It's an excellent tool for keeping people informed, and we need we need to take Nextdoor to the next level. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when it comes to next door, I've I've called and I talked with someone with next door, and I asked them, can we set up a district three next door group where whenever we have information that we need to get out, I can just send it out, and every group neighborhood group that's a part of next uh, nextdoor.com will receive that information. I'm waiting to get uh, confirmation from them. It's a very very effective tool. Um, this is something. We'll encourage, continue to encourage businesses to move into District 3 and to hire local residents to work. Uh, a good friend who owns Subway at uh, River Lane, uh, no, at Polk and Camp Wisdom, uh, he was going to try and be here, but he had something come up. Um, he intentionally hires students that live in the area. 
He told me he recently hired a student from Carter High School who's been one of the best workers that he has there at that subway. And so I want to encourage more businesses to do the same thing. Uh, this year, uh, we're going to partner with the Oakland Chamber of Commerce on business development and job training. Um, one of the things that really, and I serve on the board of the Oak Cliff Chamber by being a council member in the Oak Cliff area. And one of the things that got me excited is uh, Keandra, when we first sat down to talk, she said, I want to focus on all of Oak Cliff. I said, huh? She said, traditionally we focused on North Oak Cliff, but we want to, I want to have a different focus. I want to focus on all of Oak Cliff. I said, I am in. Because we've got to make sure that our businesses that are in the southern part of Oak Cliff have the support that they need. Uh, they know, you know, just because everybody can, you can fry chicken don't mean you know how to run a business. So, oftentimes, people have great, Big Mama recipe P is great, but yet still we don't have the business skills necessary to not just sustain the business, but take it to the next level. And so, I'm excited about that. Another thing that she shared with me is, we want to make, make Oak Cliff workforce ready. That's huge. Because when we look at Oak Cliff, which is a huge area, certain areas, for example, the Lancaster Corridor, which is a part of Neighborhood Plus target area, $10,000 average, uh, average in income. Average income, $10,000. And so what we want to do is we want to give individuals who live in that area specifically an opportunity to not only have a job, but go into a career path where they can go from either not employed to not just minimum wage or a first level, but to focus on opportunities to address this middle skills gap. And so I'm really excited about what's gonna happen as a result of that partnership. We wanna host a quarterly edition three ministers breakfast. I had an opportunity to meet with the ministers and uh, they asked me, you know, what can we do for you? Well, I wasn't there to talk about what they can do for me. I was there to build a relationship and find out how, what I can do for them. And I told them, what you can do for me is you can make sure that your, that your uh, members are aware of all the great things that we're focused on doing down south. And that will be a tremendous help to me. We're going to host a partner on a Southern Dallas Food Desert seminar. Um, this is something that's been talked about a lot, the food desert, but we need to come together and develop a comprehensive plan. We can't just keep talking about, they won't come here. We've got to support co-ops. We've got to have our own Oak Cliff Farmers Market. We've got to do things. We've got to take responsibility, and we've got to show that there's a demand and there's a need down south for, um, for our services. And once people see it, the first one that comes, I guarantee you, the first one that comes, Everybody else is going to want to follow. And so um, we're going to have a conversation about that, and then we're going to create an action plan. Uh, we're going to host a men's health symposium. Uh, men, you know, we're just not doing a good job of taking care of our health. We're just not. So it's time for us to have a real conversation and have some people who are knowledgeable about men's health who can talk to us with real talk. Uh, not what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, then other people suffer. Uh, we're going to host a Thanksgiving turkey giveaway. Last year, we, we partnered with uh, Councilmember Scott Griggs and Councilmember Carolyn Arnold, and we gave away 450 turkeys. And so we're looking forward to, to doing that also. Uh, we're going to do a District 3 Christmas party and toy giveaway. Um, my good friend and my neighbor, Dr. Tracy Brown, who's a council with DSD, has volunteer to lead this effort. So if you would like to be a part of it, uh, we're in conversation with Encore about being one of our sponsors. And so um, if you're interested in being a part of that, um, I think it'll be a great thing. And we're also partnering with Toys for Tots. And we want to continue to provide rapid response time for providing services to residents of District 3. At the end of the day, what's most important is that your needs and your area or addressed. Whenever you have a concern, you call the office, you get the response that you need, and your issues or concerns are addressed. And so I'm excited about what we've done, but I'm more excited about what's going to take place in 2016. So thank you, and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to ask them at this time.
Okay, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. As far as the city, there's a, a, a huge effort. But I'll be honest, you're the first person to say anything to me about bike lanes in District 3. So um, now that this has been brought to my attention, I'll definitely have a conversation with our Assistant Director of Mobility, and we can see what the plans are, if there are any plans specifically in District 3, or there any particular areas uh, within the district. I know you live near the, in the, in the, near the uh, near Campbell High School. Yeah. Sit down and talk about it. Chris, did you get that? Yeah, I got it. All right. Excellent. I tell you, KB. 2017, there's a city bond program that is coming up, and those issues are being addressed and planned to extend and repair bike trails and extension. So, again, the effort is being put in the bond program, and that's something we have to push and vote for as we are trying to get those type of propositions on the ballot as we move forward with that. And that is a priority. For not only southern Dallas, but all the, I mean, not only northern Dallas, but also the push south of the train. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? I appreciate that. You know what I'm talking Matter of fact, Chris, let's make sure Wall is at that meeting that we have with, with Martin. And maybe we can get an uh, assistant director of mobility at that meeting as well. So, all right. Right here at the end. So the gateway. Uh, 
we support new development, but we, we make sure that the local businesses who are the foundation of that area continue to get the support that they get. But I'm glad you brought that, that to, to my attention. I'll talk with uh, Carl Zerkowski, who's all with the Office of Economic Development, uh, about that. Chris, did you hear that? Okay, he was talking about uh, as new development, new developers or developers come into an area, we want to make sure that those who all who've been there and been the foundation of that area, that they don't basically run over, which we've seen happen a lot. So uh, remind me to talk to Carl about that. Thank you. February 6th. February 6th at Cliff Temple Baptist Church in the parking lot. Okay, She'll send that out to about a thousand people. So it, may be, it may be overrun the first, the first day. And she's going to have the first follow-up meeting 
on Thursday at 6.30, and I'll be there for this one. I'll be there the whole time for this one. And so we wanted, the whole point was to present and introduce what Grow South is and what are some of the priorities. But now, and then listen, but now we need to come back and offer solutions. And so uh, I'll be getting, reviewing the list that you sent me with, you know, what, what uh, the residents said. So before we go to the meeting, we'll already have a plan on how to address those things, and we can make sure that those concerns are addressed. So uh, any other questions that you want to ask? Um, well, um, Emily Tyre from the Rosa. One, um, one of my nosy neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes. Well, one of the things that we're finding is that the warehouses, we have a developer who wants to come in and build one humongous, well, it's the size of 31 football fields, one building, right at our gateway. And so we appreciate that Councilman Thomas has been helping us fight that, but we just found out yesterday that they are coming in and offering Plan B, which we thought we won and they were going away. But if we allow this warehouse to come in, it's going to degrade all of the houses around it. And to what? Um, it's at Mountain Creek Parkway and Camp Wisdom. So we appreciate that you're helping us keep that out so that we can grow and get more houses into double. So it proves me he didn't understand no the first time. No. So we have to, we have to show up what no means. Yeah. So uh, we'll talk about that uh, at the meeting on, on Thursday. Blanks brought that to my attention, and I'll make sure that I have the information uh, prior to, and I have a copy of the plans prior to, so we can make sure he understands no means no. So Casey, I'll yeah, just uh, send you on things that uh, a little bit controversial. Uh, take a position on the other uh, school request to uh, Mr. Johnson. So you want to play the role of president? <laughs> Into more of them. Into more of them. <laughs> um, I, I'll say this, at the meeting two weeks ago, when we tabled the issue, uh, I made a motion to deny it. Um, and since on tomorrow, you know, I don't expect to get much sleep tonight. I haven't got much the past two weeks, but Thursday is another day. Um, I'll make known you know, my, my interest at, uh, uh, my intentions at that time. Uh, we've had two community, uh, we had a community meeting. Uh, me and uh, Trustee Foreman had on last Wednesday and Trustee Foreman had one on, on Friday. If there's anyone who lives in District 3 who would like to share with me on your opinion on that at the end of the press conference, I'll, I'll listen or you can email me and, and we're, getting, we're getting feedback on both sides. Um, the one thing, and I said this on Friday night, and I meant this, there's life after this vote. We have to exist after this vote. The bigger issue is how involved are we going to be in the schools? How involved are we going to be in the schools? Those parents from Uplift have showed up at council meetings. They've showed up at community meetings. And the comment has been made, you know, what, is it, what, what would it take to get our parents of our DSD schools to show that same type of commitment to their children's education? So, you know, um, um, it'll be discussed. People have opportunity at the hearing tomorrow. If you want to come down, it'll probably be packed. You might want to get there early. Uh, the hearings will begin after 1 p.m. and uh, and then we'll I'm sure a decision will definitely be made. And whatever decision is made, whatever the, the will of the council is, I support that. I respect that. And uh, and we want to make sure that uh, that after this we have a larger conversation about about the quality of education, whether it's charter, whether it's uh, 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 ISD public school, whether it's private school. We need to have a larger Conversation about the importance of education. Well, I, I just all I want to just say is mm -hmm. I think the economic development is, is everything. Right. And so we can't just overlook and talk about you know the use of that. that that's a really economic thing to be able to consider having additional uh, types of structures that are supportive of education. So I don't see, uh, I mean, that's just my, my position on it. I appreciate that, and that will be taken into consideration. Thanks a lot. Councilman uh, Thomas, can you explain to me, because I know 
what I thought was a food desert, what it meant to me. Can you explain to me, because I keep hearing you saying the food desert in Oak Cliff, I'm thinking that it's miles that we don't have the grocery stores over here in the area. So can you elaborate on that a little right. bit? Well, it relates specifically to, to healthy food choices. Uh, distance relates to healthy food choices. And so um, um, I can get you, you know, the specific, you know, uh, definitions on, on that. But we know we look at Southern Dallas as a whole, you know, we don't, we don't have that. You know, oftentimes it's made comparison of what they have out north. And, and it's time to stop complaining about what we don't have and do for ourselves and create. You know, we already hear it right here. There will be an Oakland Farmers Market. We show support. We show there's a demand. Trust me, they'll come running. And then they'll have to answer to us. So well, that's my active side. I'm not I'm tired here for a Anybody else have any questions? What street? <laughs> I'm sorry. What street? Mark Trail Way. Mark Trail Way. Hampton. Hampton. Okay. Well, well, there is a list that we have uh, of streets that will be required in District 3. What I'm going to do, Chris? Yeah. All right. Um, that list that we received with the list of streets that are going to be required in 2016, let's go ahead and send that out in the email. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll send that list out. Uh, You'll be made aware of uh, if that street's on the list, if it's not on the list, then we can see what we can do to get it added to the list. You're more than welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> when they say the street list, there might be a pothole here, and then you go down a block and a half, and there's another pothole. Mm -hmm. But they just fix the one in front of whatever address was given. Will they start looking at the whole street as opposed to just that portion of the street? Yes, we definitely make sure that they do that. Where do you live? I live uh, right off of Brook Valley and okay. God Drive. Okay, all right, I know exactly. It's the alley. Yeah, I know and exactly. they will patch one little hole right. and don't go the whole mm -hmm. length of the alley. Right, well, well definitely, if you see that happening, definitely make sure you contact my office. And if you don't have a number, we'll make sure that you have it. Uh, because, I, you know, I, I need to be made aware that those things are taking place. So we want to make sure that a street, not a block, a street, is required. What about the Alice? Alice on the list as well. Call 
they go to a great school, they go to Dale Turner, which is in District 3. But um, and, and in, in, in their class, in the government class, they ask, you know, about local government, you know, who the mayor is. Yeah, my daddy went with the mayor, so you know, it's a little different experience for them. But that just goes to show that they're introducing government at a younger age to, to kids, which 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 they should. And so I, I, I appreciate that, and I'll take care of them. What's your feelings about the um, 35 deck park that's being considered? Mm -hmm. Is that a good? It's a great thing. I think uh, to be able to, to, to have a deck park south uh, of 30 will be a great thing for those kids who don't have transportation to the Clyde Warren Park. And so, um, and look what's happened around the Clyde Warren Park. We had one of the most controversial issues in my first council meeting was about a high-rise development that was taking place right at Clyde Warren Park. So there's opportunities for development that can come, and economic development, as, as Barton would emphasize, that can come as a result of that. And just a place for our kids to have and, and go and play in a nice, safe, clean environment. You know, but we're going to need you know, we can put, the city can put money and other intergovernmental can put money, but we're going to need a private, a, a champion in Southern Dallas who's willing to put up money. The reason it's Clyde Warren Park is because Clyde Warren Daddy yeah. put the money in. It just is what it is. Okay? And so we need, and we have those type of champions in Southern Dallas, and whether they live in Oak Cliff or they moved away for whatever reason. We have those champions in Southern Dallas, and here's an opportunity for one or several to step up to the plate and put in private funds into this project that's going to be in Southern Dallas. I think it's going to be great, and I stand in support of it, and uh, it's going to be a dramatic career. Tenants are going to be in discussion between Council Member Carolyn Arnold and Councilman Scott Griggs. Issues. Any more questions? We'll give yourselves a round of applause for coming down here and listening to you talk all this time. I thank you, and uh, I was joking earlier, I said, you know, this is the first of hopefully seven more. But uh, <laughs> I didn't want it to be a state of the union type of dress room up here talking all the time. I wanted to hear from you. So thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. I want to acknowledge my sister and my nephew, Renee Wheeler and Andre Wheeler, for being here. District 3 is one of my big supporters, Mr. Tim Williams Chicken. He, don he, he, has, he donated 50 boxes of chicken to a city's uh, uh, living uh, apartments in the district. So let's give Tim Williams a round. And I just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because you're making District 3 great. I just need the credit. I'm <laughs>